got you that fancy coffee you like. I don't want it. Oh, so expensive. America has always been the land of excessive food options and great value. Unfortunately, lately, there are fewer options and prices are going up. Here are 10 reasons why food is getting more expensive in the U.S. Rising fertilizer costs. It's too expensive. I'm done. The price of any product sold on the open market, including food, is frequently determined by the price of its inputs, and foods are no exception. The majority of the food we eat comes from agricultural sources, such as bread, milk, meat, fruits, and vegetables. Fertilizers are used to enhance natural soil nutrients, antibiotics are used to prevent animal illnesses, and pesticides are used to help protect crops from various threats, such as animals, insects, weeds, and other different microorganisms. For almost a century, farmers have used synthetic fertilizers since they have consistently produced better crop yields. As a result, it should come as no surprise that as the price of synthetic fertilizers rises throughout the world, so will food costs. It is what it is. That is exactly what is occurring right now all over the world. The cost of raw materials in the fertilizer industry, ammonia, nitrogen, nitrates, phosphates, potash, and sulfates have increased by 30% since the beginning of 2022. Their prices have already surpassed those witnessed during the 2008 food and energy crises. Fertilizer costs haven't slowed down since reaching new heights, with all eight key fertilizers seeing price increases on a month-to-month -month basis. Crop yields are becoming smaller. Our crop yields are so much smaller than that of mighty Latvia. In many regions of the world, the threat of a declining food supply and the quality of food available is a direct result of rising fertilizer prices. For example, crop yields in the Philippines might decline by as much as 10% since urea, a critical nitrogen fertilizer, is currently around $57 per bag. The yield forecast is even worse in other areas. Rice, potatoes, and corn harvested in Peru might drop by as much much as 40% unless additional fertilizer becomes available. Crop yields are expected to decline 10% next season, resulting in 36 million fewer tons of rice, which is enough to feed 500 million people. How sad is that? A 20% reduction in potash use might result in a 14% loss in yields in Brazil, the world's largest soybean producer. A coffee cooperative representing 1,200 small growers in Costa Rica expects output to drop by as much as 15% next year. Declining fertilizer use in West Africa would reduce this year's rice and maize production by a third. Food production in Sub-Saharan Africa might plummet by 30 million tons in 2022, which is enough food to feed 100 million people. Although these figures are from countries and regions outside of the United States, the lower crop yields around the world still has an impact on the U.S., as America imports thousands of food products from around the globe. Maybe there will be a shift to more food production efforts on American soil, which would be in addition to the already massive amount of agriculture the U.S. already produces. Soaring energy prices. My price just went up. The surge in energy prices is one of the reasons for the increasing fertilizer and, by extension, food costs, because fertilizer production is particularly energy intensive. Natural gas is used as a raw material to make ammonia, which is the basic component of all nitrogen fertilizers, and accounts for the majority of global fertilizer usage. Natural gas expenses typically account for 60% to 80% of production costs. Coal is also gasified into ammonia and used to make fertilizers in some countries such as China. As a result, as natural gas and coal prices begin to rise, so will the cost of producing fertilizers for agricultural use. Everyone put in $20 each. Uh, yes, I'll cover you. Natural gas prices in the United States recently reached their highest level since 2008, while coal prices have surpassed $100 per ton for the first time in over a decade. Various fertilizer plants in Europe have already been forced to close due to rising natural gas prices, causing food supply problems. India, a key coal and agricultural exporter, is suffering from the biggest power outages in years. Food costs might become the next source of pressure as energy prices rise to multi-decade highs. To complicate things even more, food suppliers must compete for energy with other industries, such as the manufacturing of automobiles. For example, the manufacturing of biofuel diverts crops away from agriculture, and the creation of lithium-ion 
lithium-ion batteries also necessitates chemicals used in fertilizer production. Russia's invasion of Ukraine. If it means war, then we say no! Consumers throughout the world have been affected by Russia's invasion of Ukraine, since supply chain delays and economic sanctions have increased the cost of everything, including food. Because of its climate, Ukraine has some of the most fertile soil in the world, and its agriculture industry has long been regarded as the breadbasket of Europe. Ukraine accounts for around a quarter of all worldwide wheat exports. Exports. Wow. Russia is also a large supplier of nitrogen fertilizers and is a big producer of agricultural products. As a result, the ongoing conflict in Ukraine might be considered as a major disruptor in the global food industry, especially in terms of international commerce and global food prices. Given the weight of Russian production, other nations will only be able to partially address global supply shortfalls. Monetary policies. You can't give your friend money. It's a very strange policy. I can't be held responsible. The expansionary policies pursued by central banks throughout the world are another one of the reasons we are seeing a worldwide inflation crisis, and not only surrounding food prices. Loose monetary policies have been widely established in the past as contributing to inflation while promoting economic development. Then, following significant increases in government expenditures due to an unanticipated incident in the form of a global pandemic, heightened inflation fears. Economic relief measures have historically resulted in high costs for products and services, and we're now seeing the effects of inflation this year. No, God! The effect is most noticeable in the United States, where inflation continues to grow and has already hit the highest level in 40 years. Price levels have risen by 6% globally, which is still significantly more than the widely accepted 2% increase. Rising oil prices. The only thing that didn't fall was the price of gas. The existing global food system is heavily reliant on transportation, which requires fuel. In the near and medium future, fuel prices will almost surely keep rising, making the existing, largely fuel-dependent agricultural supply chain less secure and food more expensive. The link between food and oil is structural, and food and fuel costs have risen and decreased almost in lockstep in recent years. Oil products are used in modern agriculture to fuel farm machines and transfer farm produce to the customer. Oil is also frequently utilized as a component of agricultural chemicals. As a result, rising oil prices put pressure on all of these parts of the commercial food system, which means that the high and fluctuating price of crude oil will probably continue to drive up food costs. Furthermore, when oil prices climb, so does the need for biofuels, and those are the only non-fossil liquid fuels that can be used in current combustion engines and automobiles. Biofuels, on the other hand, are frequently created from maize and other agricultural products. Crop prices are driven upwards as demand for alternative energy sources grows, again, making food even more expensive. No! Agricultural crops based on exports make the globe more vulnerable to high oil prices. Fuel expenditures can account for up to 60% of total shipping expenses. Many impoverished farmers who cannot afford machinery, gasoline, or commercial agricultural supplies are at a disadvantage in the global food system. As a result, millions of farmers are forced out of business each year. And less farmers means higher food prices. Climate change. Climate change is a threat which affects us all, Mr. Valentine. Weather extremes have produced large increases in food costs in recent years, producing social, economic, and political disruptions in both developing and industrialized countries. Rice prices surged 217%, wheat prices jumped 136%, corn prices rose 125%, and soybean prices rose 107% in the past decade. That sounds expensive. Water shortages in grain-producing areas contribute significantly to the worldwide food price crisis, which contributed to food instability. Floods in Pakistan destroyed a large part of the agriculture industry in 2010, and a severe heat wave and drought in Russia resulted in a food export embargo. Climate change effects have seen consequences, which include warmer temperatures, shifting seasons, more frequent and intense weather events, flooding, and drought, all of which would increase the likelihood of such agriculture-disrupting catastrophes. 
catastrophes. Apart from catastrophic occurrences like flooding and drought, agricultural adaptation to stresses like rising temperatures and shifting seasons will be required as a result. Climate change's impacts on agriculture, along with a growing global population and rising wages, and therefore demand, pose a danger to global food security. Most experts anticipate that prices will continue to climb over the next several months. More waste. I'll eat this tonight. Because it's not right to waste food! The price of meat has steadily been going up. And we're not talking that grass-fed, organic, free-range meat. From beef and chicken to hot dogs and bacon, people are cutting back due to the higher prices. It's too much! It's too much! The truth is, we've never spent more on food in general, and meat in particular, as a percentage of our income. But another source of inflating food prices is waste. Although up to 50% of what fruit and vegetable farmers produce is rejected on or near near the farm, then around 40% of what we buy in stores is thrown away at home, wasting a completely valuable resource. And in the end, we have to spend more money on food. One solution is to promote better agricultural systems, more sustainable farming, and improved animal care. One thing to remember is that farmers are business owners. They do not produce the food you desire, but instead they produce the food that you will purchase. So to affect change, it has to be financial appealing to them. For far too long, there has been a dichotomy between condemning farmers for unethical activities on the one hand and complaining about the high expense of food on the other. So while food prices will continue to rise, it's nothing that the U.S. hasn't seen before. Droughts throughout the world. Global warming, sir. Prices on the majority of commodities, from timber to grain, have been influenced by extreme weather and supply chain concerns in recent years. Coffee Coffee and avocados appeared to be surviving in an inflationary situation until lately. That has changed recently, according to industry experts, as the worst frost in Brazil's coffee growing area in more than 25 years is causing prices to skyrocket. Brazil, the world's largest coffee producing country, is facing a two pronged attack heavy frost followed by a drought that has already dried the 2021 to 2022 crop. Yikes, that's a recipe for disappointment. Appointment. Investors were hoping that the 2022 harvest would help replenish a drought-stricken 2021 crop, but concerns are growing. Brazil is not the only country being affected by drought. Around the globe, water sources for many agricultural areas are drying up, making growing healthy crops almost impossible. Diseases Pawnee has been hit with the avian flu. Tie. No, this is bad news. Over the past century, avian influenza has killed 3 billion birds and infected more than 50 million people. Experts believe that the virus was introduced from domestic birds to wild waterfowl in the 1960s and 70s. Not coup. Cool. There have been six global pandemics of the virus since it was discovered in 1891. The greatest avian flu epidemic since 2015 is affecting commercial and backyard flocks in 29 states. It's already driving up egg prices and chicken prices aren't far behind. Chicken prices are predicted to climb between 6% and 7% this year, while egg prices will rise from 2.5% to 3.5%. Add that to the already elevated prices due to the COVID pandemic, and you have a serious recipe for inflation that will affect the prices of food and the supply chain for the foreseeable future. We can only hope that the effects from these pandemics can teach us how to overcome similar problems in the future. Gotta stay optimistic, you know? Stay right here and tap or click another great video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad. And hey, leave us a comment.